So our topic of this week, and this is um, especially relevant, is putting um, – so it's explaining your complex formulas on spreadsheets. So for me, because um, I do dashboard development um, and consulting, you know, I don't really have a great way – at least I haven't discovered a great way to comment my formulas. I know people have talked about doing that with formulas with different – uh, functions. Sometimes uh, I will have an extra tab. Well, I should say rarely I'll have an extra tab sort of explaining what I've done when the client wants it. Often I'll just type up um, something in Word. But, you know, there's a comment system in VBA, but there isn't necessarily a comment system in formulas. So I just wanted to hit the panel and see uh, how do you do this? How do you um, balance the complexity of formulas? And explaining them to people because you can look at code that's written especially semantically um, and say, hey, I sort of get what's going on, but formulas are its own um, syntax, its own language. So sometimes it's hard to figure out and what things can you do to make that easier, like named ranges. Um, and then we'll probably segue into a sort of broad discussion about commenting your, your spreadsheets in general and what you do and what you should do and what you probably should not do. So I will give it to the panel. If anyone wants to start first, jump in. Well, um, this, that's really interesting. Um, I'm glad you bring this up because, right, I haven't seen a good, consistent way of doing it. And, yes, you can put a comment on a cell, but several times I've seen those get all messed up. Um, I've seen where a client had hundreds of comments in sales and, you know, Here's a cell here, and the comment was way off 20 uh, columns over and 15 rows down, and it was all tall and skinny, and everything we tried to get them back didn't work, or it would work temporarily. Uh, so I've stopped using those things. Um, so then one thing that I've started doing with my with my workshops is not so much individual formulas, but concepts and what's going on on a particular page and putting text box text boxes with notes you know and instructions on a separate page or sometimes on a page but individual formulas I haven't gone that granular it's true so sorry go ahead uh, I usually don't add comments in the formulas, although there are ways to do it. People do it with the end. I think it's the end function in other ways. Uh, but I, I will put notes actually in the spreadsheet, either above or below, off to the side. Sometimes really detailed notes, but it's actually just in the cells. You know, about what the different parts might right. do. Might even explain something about how it calculates. Huh. But not right in the formula. That's not that's something I've never done. And and that's not something I've done either. Even though I know um, that people have have talked about doing it. And actually, I want to point everyone's attention to a um, blog post that Winston Snyder did that had appeared on my blog. Um, and I'll post it here in the chat. But he talks about a way to sort of set up your formulas um, using the Enter key. So. He calls it uh, sort of wrapped up formulas, but so these are these are um, things that I uh, am sort of wondering because, like I said, the VBA world, um, it's sort of a given that you do comments, but um, out in the formula world, and by the way, I'm just going to throw this on the chat. Out in the formula world, we don't really have a, a good answer for this. So um, one thing in particular is I did a particularly complex. Uh, formula for for a client they were looking through and they said I don't I don't understand this um, you know and I realized at first I was thinking well you know you don't understand it that's why I'm here um, but the truth is right. this is for uh, <laughs> right see what a smart ass I am in my head um, so but the truth is they should be able to understand at least some of it and they said well I need this for auditing purposes so actually I found I was very uh, sympathetic to that argument found it very appealing so what I did is I moved it over to make it a user defined function because they could follow along with that a lot more easily. So I'm wondering, um, uh, Mike, so when you teach the more complex uh, control shift enter style formulas, and I suppose, see in my head I think control shift enter is complex, but it doesn't actually necessarily need to be. But as you teach those more complex formulas, 
how do you help, how do you tell students um, to remember them or is it just a matter of repetition? So it's similar to how I do all my videos at YouTube. I build them. It's, I, and you know, all my videos at YouTube, I always try to tell a story. But with a, a complex formula, I start on the inside or I start at some point in the formula where it makes most sense to start and then build from the inside out. Uh, using the F9 key a lot to evaluate um, and then after you enter using formula evaluator so so my approach to teaching is to tell explain each bit as you build it mm -hmm. right that well, and that's it teaching and it's interesting that you know when Jordan starts talking about the people who get audited um, I really haven't you know, had a, 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 say a client who wanted to know about the details of these formulas. You know, they, they might feel weirded out by them because it's so complex and they're scared of typing over them, but not many have wanted to know about that. And, and I don't fault anybody for that because, yeah, you know, if your job is, is making dental floss, you know, who cares if you can uh, run a, a nested if statement. Um, but it's been the students, yeah, and teaching them how to build them piece by piece and using a formula evaluator. Yeah, so, the, the other thing is, instead of building it in the cell from the inside out, you know, the old trick that's been around since the beginning is you build the formula piece by piece in different cells, and then you mash right. it all together. And mm -hmm. sometimes I use the uh, if you build each part of the formula in different cells, then you go and copy each part, collect them on the clipboard, and then paste them together, mashing them all into one cell. Right, right. But right. that's more right. from the, uh, the the learning side of it or the building side of it. Uh, Jordan, you, you were more talking about how you leave notes, right? Well, really, I'm talking about the whole thing in general because um, what I found – uh, you know, while I can read them and I can remember what I'm doing, uh, people have asked, well, uh, they'll say, what the bleep is this formula? And then I'll sort of take them through it if they've done these types of formulas before. Sometimes they say, oh, that's really tough, or oh, I get it, or, um, you know, I, I get that now that you've explained it. But if they haven't seen this type of formula before, you know, then you have to teach them from scratch. But the real, the real question isn't so much about commenting, which I know I, I let into, but it's a question of, sort of uh, transparency, at least in terms of formulas. So, like I said, we've all sort of looked at code and we've thought about how do you make this readable. So, what are things, so if someone comes in and says, I want to learn these awesome array formulas, I've heard um, Excel is fun, um, Mike Gervin talking about how cool they are, but when I make them, or when I try to make them, I, I hit all these roadblocks. So, you had said several things that you use that I wanted our leaders, or not leaders, sorry, our readers to take note. So, one of them was F9 that the instant evaluate, the other one... And always control Z. Oh, yeah, control Z, yes. Right, That's you got F9, everything. control Z. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, control Z, that's the undo. And then you also brought up the formula um, evaluator, which is um, on... I want to make sure I get this right. It's on the formulas tab. I was about to say the data tab. Alt-MV. Oh, okay, so what was that again? Alt-MV. Alt M V. So our readers take our li our listeners take note. Alt M V. Um, hey, 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 you gotta slow down. Okay. Those hard headed Mac people don't have a phone. Oh yeah, that's phone. true. That's true. You're gonna <laughs> The Mac people uh will probably have to look these ones up after the show. But there are there are there are um control keys for for these. So um and then what was what were some other ones that you mentioned? You said Breaking everything up and then mashing together. Breaking everything up. When I was learning a lot of things from all the amazing people at the Mr. Excel uh, form, I'd they just post the formula and it was big and huge. It doesn't matter even today when I go post a question and get a big formula, I can't just look at it and read it. Right. But I would take it back and actually take take each part of the formula and put it into a cell and see how it was calculating yeah. and then mash it back together. Yeah. I mean, there's not very many people that can just look at a huge formula and read it. No, and um and I did a blog post a while ago 
because so so we are talking about say formulas that have that do a bunch of tasks a bunch of different calculations or checks for conditions but then there's also error handling and then there's triggers because there's sometimes the math is really easy it's just multiplying two cells together but you've got the error handling so that you can deal with what if you get that you know that ref or the na or whatever so you're handling that and then you have a trigger that says okay if I don't have five test results, don't calculate anything because if you start calculating something, it's going to be wrong. So now, yeah, you got a big old formula, very little of it is work, and then a whole bunch of error handling and triggers. So I, I, what, what I think is, you know, um, first off, anytime that I'll use notes, I usually do that as an object, and I'll bring, I'll bring an object out, and I'll type into the object so that, that stays on the top of the cells and doesn't get – you know, it, it doesn't get lost anywhere. But I, I'll tell you, the number one thing for me is to eliminate the need for those. And uh, I used to build a lot of forward-looking financial statements. Used to be, it was my job for a while to do pricing for a large company. And we, we would um, basically to we kind of kind of to what Mike said, uh, we would I would take take this and kind of decompose the entire formula and then separate it out into a way. Sometimes on different spreadsheets where I may have inputs. And I may have a calculation sheet, and then I'll have outputs, you know, something to where instead of trying to build everything into one cell and to make it as complicated as possible, make it to where it's somewhat intuitive. And I, I think the more you simplify the spreadsheet, the less you even have need for the notes to begin with. Uh, you know, make it to where it's usable. Right. Now, that's a good point. So uh, what I do, um, or at least I try to do, is if, um, if I know I can employ a named range and – I'm very big on this because we argue about this over on my blog. Um, Crystal, Crystal Long is talking about named ranges. Right, exactly. So named ranges. If you can do a named range and you give it a really, really um, good descriptive name, so try your best not to abbreviate it. I'm very big on that. Then when you come back later and you look at that really hard uh, some product formula, you will likely understand what's going on versus doing something like Val D1. So named ranges are a way, I believe, and I don't know if um, – you could speak to that at all, Mike. Do you ever do you use named ranges? Oh, I, I love named ranges and table Ooh, uh, formula table. nomenclature. All of that. Do, well, you know, if you have multiple conditions, date greater than or equal to lower, uh, date less than or equal to upper, sales rep equal to whatever, you can look at that and yes. you're right. Define names are great. Yes. Yep. Don't forget uh, table formula nomenclature. That's some pretty good stuff, too. It do, it, yeah, tables, yep. Oz was telling me that he heard uh, from Zach Barris, I believe, that the rate of table usage in Excel is unbelievably low, disappointingly low. Yeah, that's true. You know, so for those who are listening, so he's writing a book on it. can be your friend. Yeah, he is so writing, Zach's book on writing a book on it. On it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it, tables can do some amazing things, and I include uh, tables in my classes on my tests. I, I have a, a in my advanced Excel class, we do a lot of table stuff, including some of the tricks I learned from Zach. Wow. So, yeah. what's your what's your favorite array formula? Well, let's say what's your top three favorites? It had to be an array right. formula. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be there. What's your, you know, what's your top three favorite data pulling formulas? Anyone? I know I love some product. I'm gonna just come out there and just say some product. Go throw that out there. Just, uh, this yeah. is be out in front of everybody. <laughs> are you are you asking about an array formula or a data pulling array formula? I should say I should say not formulas but functions. Um, functions. How about both? I mean, it's uh, it's up to you on that one. What are your favorites? Well, uh, do you know there's uh, look up uh, some products pretty good. Index is pretty amazing. Match yeah. is pretty amazing. Uh, and the lookup function, the lookup function can do a lot of amazing things. In fact, next Friday the duel, Mr. Excel schools me with an array formula that where he uses lookup. And this is lookup. 
not VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP. This look is the up. original. Lookup can, those arguments, all three of them, including the lookup value, can do function argument array operations. And, yeah, so, sorry, I said that wrong. The, the lookup value is expecting a single lookup value. That's where you do a function argument array operation. And then the other three potential arguments can do array operations without doing control shift enter. Ooh. Wow, that's so fancy. Lookup function's pretty good. Cool. So, so he schools you next week. I can't wait for that. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah.